if he does have the authority in this case, we're going to be in serious trouble in the future when any person can undo in one sentence the laws of our state. This flagrant violation of Texas law and the Constitution must be challenged. And that is exactly what I am doing. I am refusing to obey the President's order to scrap our appropriations bill, which was signed into law months ago. I am ordering all agencies to follow the laws of the 62nd legislature and award raises to teachers and state employees as originally authorized by the legislature. I am also, by this order, ensuring that no agency head will be liable in any way for obeying Texas law. I accept full responsibility for this action. The steps we have taken with regard to import charges and protection of the dollar do not amount to the building of a permanent protective wall around this country in which we can relax and afford to be inefficient and non-competitive. They are aimed at simply preparing us to participate and compete more vigorously than ever in world affairs and with any other economy in the globe. It was our competitive spirit that made us a great nation a strong nation, a rich nation in the first place. We need a rebirth of that spirit today. There were two general directions in the questioning here in the House Investigating Committee hearing today. One involved procedural matters within the state insurance and banking departments as it pertained to the Sharpstown State Bank incidents. The other, of course, involved political figures, and this came during questioning of former State Attorney General Wagoner Carr. Carr said that during these uh, events in 1969, he saw nothing that led him to believe that there was anything wrong being done at that time. He also said, however, that this whole matter is knee-deep in politics. In an exchange with Representative DeWitt Hale, this further information was developed with Mr. Carr. In questioning Carr, and also in questioning the state bank commissioner, Robert Stewart, Representative Nugent also brought out some new information about Mr. Sharp. We've been curious about why Sharp's grant of immunity included the federal wiretap statute. Representative Nugent may have cleared that question up with this exchange. Do you have any knowledge of any wrongdoing that he did in the bank, like taping the conversations in all of the rooms of the bank, listening in on the opposite parties and trades that were made through his elaborate wiretapping operation, or any of this other information, such as wiretapping the confidential meetings of the FDIC men who were looking over the bank records and the rest of it? Do you have any knowledge of that? No, sir, I don't have any knowledge of it. I I hadn't even heard anything about it until you just said it. Do you know who removed this recording equipment from these rooms in the bank? Uh, yes, the, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Our testimony yesterday, I believe, if I recall it correct, was that other conversations had been taped and that the FBI had them. Do you have any knowledge that might be helpful to us in uh, relation to who has these tapes, where the equipment no. is, in order that we might chase it and try to 
become acquainted with it. I'm sorry. I, the only tape I know of is, is the one I heard. Uh, that certainly doesn't necessarily mean there were no other tapes, but that's the only one the FBI has told me about. I'm hoping that uh, uh, my relationship with a lot of the business community, uh, members of the business community, I can uh, furnish the uh, directors of the SBA and the uh, uh, funding agencies with uh, the actual needs of the business community, the minority business community, which is what we're concerned here with. Uh, the attitude that uh, has been in the past, I think, has been simply uh, lacking, uh, the interest has been lacking on uh, a part of the uh, Mexican-American or the minority business community, simply because they are not completely aware of what is available for them. The basis is the use by KERA of public funds and public airtime uh, to create a great deal of misunderstanding about the desegregation suit uh, by giving a great amount of free time to the defendants in the lawsuit to explain their position, their point of view, uh, their conclusions about the judgment of the court, the merits of the case, without uh, affording an equal amount of time for the position of the plaintiff to be made clear to the public. My reply is simply this, that throughout the desegregation controversy, Channel 13's newsroom has lived up to both the spirit and letter of the FCC's fairness doctrine. Is it the opinion of you and or your clients that KERA or its management deliberately gave airtime to the defendants in the case and not to the plaintiff? Uh, that appears to be the case in light of correspondence that's been exchanged between the defendants and KERA. First of all, in the Judge Taylor's order, it was Superintendent Nolan Estes and uh, the head of the school board, John Plath Green, and the other members of the school boards were the defendants. 
and thus named in this order of Judge Taylor. So to have the plaintiffs on after the order was uh, instituted by Judge Taylor, we did not think would be uh, in the best interest and, and not at the heart of the matter. Did the plaintiffs contact KERA and request time at the same time the, the defendants appeared? No, they requested time following the appearance of the defendants. And that was denied? That was denied, that's right. They requested time on two separate occasions. Why, why did you refuse them? Because we did not feel that they had any basis for this request. We felt his main point throughout this is that we have given time to the defendants and that we have not given time to the plaintiffs. He doesn't make this distinction. We never had the defendants on newsroom prior to Judge Taylor's ruling. Defendants appeared on newsroom subsequently to Judge Taylor's ruling, but in their positions as people responsible for the implementation of the judge's order. And that's a very basic distinction. Did Mr. Polk and the to me, he requested an hour and a half, and in his second letter, he requested an additional 45 minutes. This was in response to two separate programs. Do you have any idea of how he, he came upon those lengths of time? He just took the length of the newsroom presentation and asked for time equal to that presentation. What do you hope to accomplish uh, through the filing of the complaint? What do you hope the FCC will do? Well, we would hope that the FCC would, would conclude that when there is a controversial issue of great public importance, that the fairness doctrine should apply to educational television stations and all stations, and that if a decision is made uh, to take a particular controversy out of the courts and litigate it to some extent uh, on the public airways, that, that they will have to be as fair uh, toward all parties concerned as the uh, courts are to all parties. Well, the FCC could rule that uh, Mr. Polk and his clients do in fact have a case and uh, order Channel 13 to uh, grant them time. This is not an equal time case, incidentally. Uh, further, uh, or on the other hand, they could say that Channel 13 has lived up to the fairness doctrine. Between an equal time and a We suggest that these people be removed from this board so as the agency can be about the business it's supposed to be about. That is, trying to solve the problems of the school. We get some five and a half million dollars in here a year to, for this agency to work on the problems of the school. And if the money is not getting down to those people uh, because people on the board are touching it. And the money is going into different places and the, and the tax salaries and so forth. And people who are in the community who need that money aren't getting it. It's very simple. I, I do. I, I really believe that within a number of years that this area will be represented in the National Hockey League. Uh, I think the, and I think the fans rate it really in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, particularly when they play each other, there's tremendous rivalry there. But uh, I think every indication is there and the fact that every year there's an increase in interest uh, would suggest that in the future that day will come. I think like any sport, expansion at the major league level takes time and planning and all cities can't come in at the same time, obviously. But I think the National Hockey League will continue to expand over the years at intervals selected by their Board of Governors and their President Clarence Campbell. And I know the Fort Worth Dallas area has always been one of the areas that are considered. Now at what time or what period in time that will happen, I'm not sure, but I really believe it will happen.
Representative Hale stated that he intends to try to subpoena the U.S. Attorney from Houston to come before this committee. Representative Nugent asked if that subpoena might also be extended to cover the federal judge, who Nugent said was involved in the Sharpstown matters before he became a judge and granted immunity to Sharp. Four games to three, first pitch. 